Ontario's election campaign officially begins tomorrow. The Premier visiting the Lieutenant Governor's office at Queen's Park today, dissolving the legislature to essentially begin the provincial election period. So we now know we will all head to the polls on June 2nd. So to discuss what to expect on the election campaign trail, we welcome to CP24 tonight Rob Gilmore, PC strategist and VP of Crestview Strategies, Tom Parkin, NDP strategist, and Sarbjeet Kaur, liberal strategist and founder of KPW Communications. Thanks to all of you. Uh, Rob, let's start with you. You know, the PCs ahead in the polls right now, of course, it's early on. Can they win their second majority? Absolutely. I believe the Premier will be the first to tell you that the only poll that matters is on election day. But if he, if he stays true to himself, if he is himself, if he continues to show people that he has worked hard for them all the way through the pandemic, will continue to do so during the election and into a second mandate, absolutely. We, we, we like his chances. All right. Tom, can the NDP pull off an upset here? And if not, how do you stop the PCs from a majority? Well, you stop the PCs by going into PC seats and winning them. You know, the, the NDP comes into this campaign having won 40 seats in the 2018 election. And there, there are another 10 seats that they narrowly lost that were only lost by 5%, so, uh, or, or less. Some of them were like 1% or 0.3%. So mm -hmm. some very tight races in 10 other seats. Those 10 other seats are PC seats. So that's why you're going to be seeing Andrea Horvath campaigning in PC riding. She was today in Kitchener, Conestoga, where she was helping school board trustee and candidate uh, Karen Meisner. And tomorrow morning, she'll be in another PC-held seat, uh, helping candidate Wasim Ahmed in um, in Mississauga, um, Mississauga uh, Malton. So you know she's going to take the fight to Mr. Ford. And and, and just to you know, be a little bit cheeky to start with, you know, Mr. Del Duca kicked off his campaign in an NDP-held seat today. So I don't understand what that's about. I thought he was fighting Don Ford. Okay, so G, let's bring you in on this. Any idea what the strategy there was? Well, that's going to be the challenge for the NDP. They're going to be trying to get those new seats that they need, but also trying to protect some of their existing seats, were, which were, quite frankly, an anomaly for them to get in the, uh, the last election. A lot of those were traditionally Liberal seats, and they may go back to the Liberals. But for the Liberals as well, I would say it's key for them to get those uh, progressive conservative seats, and that's what they're going to be focused on. But they're certainly not going to shy away from trying to get some of the NDP seats that they feel um, were traditionally theirs. I do feel that there is, a, you know, some sense of awareness of uh, where the NDP strongholds are and a unofficial, not a collaboration, but uh, you tend to definitely put your resources where you think you're going to make the most impact, and that's going to be getting those progressive conservative seats, um, big announcements coming out with the transit, and a lot of other things that are for affordability that are already making a huge impact. So I think their strategy is going to be to offer those solid policy pieces that are going to appeal to the most number of people and also fight hard to get back uh, some of the territory that they lost. Yeah, the transit announcement was a big one this uh, week for Del Duca, but he's also got a really big job, right, Subjeet? I mean, he's got to rebuild this party that went from falling from a majority four years ago to lacking official status in the ledge. How will he convince Ontario voters, Liberals, are ready to govern again? Yeah, I think it's going to be on the strength of, you know, these policy pieces. It's, it's not always about personality or, or anything like that. Um, the transit announcement, my daughter is uh, actually an NDP voter, and she was like, oh, well, wait a minute, buck a ride. I, I might actually vote Liberal. So things like that, the uh, $9,500 rebate on non-luxury electric vehicles, these are the type of things that are people are going to say, oh, okay, I can use this for, versus a you know, a tax cut that nobody really asked for or, uh, you know, a highway that's only going to benefit a certain region. So there's a lot of those those types of announcements and they're coming on very early in the campaign. So we can presume there's going to be more good news, including a robust environmental strategy. Uh, I want to pick up on a point you mentioned, Sarbjeet, not always about personality. Rob, do you agree? I do. I, I think if this if this election is about personality, Doug Ford will win all 100 24 seats. I think the electorate is left wondering, however, with regards to liberal promises, will they follow through? Stephen Del Duca was a very senior member of Kathleen Wynne's government, and voters saw through the fact that that government didn't tend to keep its promises, whereas Doug Ford over the last four years 
worked tirelessly day and night through a pandemic to keep people as safe as possible. He's created 500,000 jobs. And, and that last point about a highway that's only going to help a few people. I saw a study a few years ago that showed that $6 billion a day is lost sitting in gridlock with, with goods and services. And we're seeing supply chain issues like we've never seen before. So I think this highway is a clear choice and, and people will get to make that choice one way or the other on June 2nd. So Rob, if it's less about the personality, more about the policy, what is the top policy issue uh, the PCs are running on that they expect will get them a majority? Absolutely. Well, first and foremost for Premier Ford and his team is they're going to rebuild the economy. It's no secret that uh, every province in the federal government in the world was was devastated by a pandemic. We're into a sixth wave and, and who knows what the future will hold. But Premier Ford, as mentioned, he's created half a million jobs already and he is locked in in a way that only Premier Ford can on creating new jobs. We're going to see that through infrastructure. We're going to see that through the Premier continuing to protect workers. We saw two working for workers bills in the last year or so, and the Premier and Minister Monty McNaughton, Ontario's Labour Minister, will continue to fight for workers. It's, it's going to be a pocketbook issue. He's going to make sure that Ontario's have money in their pockets, not just survive, but get ahead.